Look, I don't really know why I'm recording this, but I, I just, I need somebody to hear it. I just got back from the doctor's office and they're not going to help. They're not going to, they're not going to take it out. A couple of months ago, I inherited my grandma's old house. She lived in a little old ranch style house outside Wichita. She'd passed away and her house was in some disrepair. We were going to sell it, but it needed to get fixed up. If we sold it as it was, it would have been leaving a lot of money on the table. So I agreed to move in and just live there. I was in a transitional period anyway. I had, I had just gotten out of a pretty serious relationship and, uh, well, it, it just worked out. I, I could use a couple months in a house. I could use something to do. I move in. I start cleaning the place up. Just a lot of cosmetic fixes. I left out the stuff that reminded me of my grandma. It felt very her. She had a lot of Bible quotes, a lot of uh, pictures of rural Kansas. She, she liked sunflowers, wheat fields, and that's something that she and I had in common. There was this painting, a uh, print, not the original, um, in her bedroom, and it was the master bedroom, where I would sleep at night. And on the wall across from her bed, by her bedroom door, there's this print of Jesus standing outside some kind of cottage, and he's knocking on a door. I think the title is Open the Door and Let Him In. He wants you to let him in your heart, it, it, it seems. Grandma loved it. And I, I'm not devout, but it reminds me of her, so I keep it up. About the fourth or fifth night of sleeping there, I get woken up at like 1.30 in the morning, give or take five minutes, because there's something in the house. I can hear it. I jerk up in bed. It doesn't sound like a burglar. Steps aren't right. The steps are strange. More like an animal. It, it, that's what I'm starting to think that it somehow is. Then a neighbor's dog has gotten in, but I, I'm freaked out. I don't want to get out of bed, but I need to do something. I look around the room to see if there's anything I can use as a weapon. Grandma didn't have a gun. Thank God. And then I hear whatever it is begin to walk towards Grandma's bedroom door. It's walking up the hallway, and I'm frozen. I'm just so fucking scared. I'm frozen. And it stops right outside her door. I'm breathing so hard, it, it almost blots out the other sounds until I hear this. Knock, knock, knock on the door. Something, uh, someone, fucking knocks on the bedroom door like the big bad wolf. They stay frozen and it, it knock, 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 it knocks again. The door's not locked. There's no lock on grandma's door. Whoever, whatever is, is outside the door could easily enter if they wanted to, but they're knocking. Knocks one more time. Knock, knock. Knock. Then it goes away. I hear it go down the hall, and it's big. It sounds like a couch. You know, like when you when you sit down the legs of a couch? That, walking down the hall. And it, it goes out the back door by the kitchen. The door swings shut. I don't move for an hour. I sure as fuck don't sleep. When the sun comes up, I finally get out of bed. I'm still shaking. I look around place isn't messed up. We were not robbed. I didn't expect us to be. There's a couple pillows that have been knocked over on the couch, but it's like something walked by them, not thrown. The most noticeable thing are the indentions. They're heavy indentions in the carpet leading to and from Grandma's bedroom door, and they're not footprints or uh, boot prints. They're not from shoes. The imprint is not right. It, it looks like cattle, like a goat or a, a bull, but bipedal, like it got on its hind legs, walked in and out of our home. I go for a drive. I have to stop because suddenly all the exhaustion hits me and my adrenaline plummets and I almost fall asleep at the wheel. I pull over, I pass out, I wake up several hours later, I, I, I jerk awake. I just immediately am freaked out. I don't know if I hallucinated it. I don't know what happened. There's no accounting for it. There's no, no way an animal on its hind legs walked into my grandma's house, knocked on the door of her bedroom, and then left. That's just not a thing that happens, okay? There's no fucking way, right? So I go crash at a friend's place. I don't say why. He thinks it's just the depression, uh, breakup blues, and I, I let him think that. That's fine. I ask if I could stay a couple days. He's a game. Once the fear's finally kind of fallen away, I know it's time. I can't abandon my grandmother's house because it was one fucked up night, so I go back and... Uh, 
well, I, I, um, I, uh, I, I buy a gun. You do. I keep cleaning up the place. Sun sets. Very on edge, but I grow tired around midnight. I get in bed. And I really debate. Do I keep the door open? Or do I close it? It's better closed. I put the gun on the nightstand by the bed. And I fall asleep. 1.30 in the morning, give or take five minutes, I wake up because there's something in my house. I hear the back door by the kitchen swing shut. I hear sounds. Now, I've I've seen the prints in the car, but the sound makes more sense. It is big. It has hooves, and it's coming straight towards the master bedroom. My heart flies. I reach over. I grab the pistol. And I, I drop it. I'm so panicked that I fucking drop it. it. It falls somewhere in the darkness on the floor. I can't get out of bed. I'm too goddamn scared. I need to have my back to a wall. I start to cry because I know exactly what's going to happen. And it, and it does. Knock. 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 And I just shake and I cry and I wait for this thing to come in and do whatever it's going to do. But it doesn't come in. Knock. 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 A, a child could open that door. Suddenly my terror breaks. I, I get into this sort of surreal clarity, a kind of lucidity, and it just feels very straightforward to me. There's something in my house. Um, it, it wants to come into this bedroom. It, it's asking permission, and I get to decide whether or not it comes into the bedroom. This, this is an exchange, a transaction. This is a request. It's not a demand. A burglar, a murderer, they demand, they take. He wants to be admitted. He wants me to let it in. Knock, knock, knock. I cough up a, <clears throat> uh, 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 hello. There's just silence for a minute and then knock. Once and hard. Invite me in or don't. And there it hangs. On the wall. Open the door and let me in. And I just start laughing. Is it Jesus? Has <laughs> Jesus shown up? Did you think grandma's in here? Did he not get the memo? Jesus broke into my house. He's knocking on my door. And I'm laughing. I just start laughing hysterically. Whatever's on the other side of the door doesn't like that. It communicates that it doesn't like that by screaming. It's like a... It's like a... A fox's scream. You know that sound? You know, you know, because um, you, you'd know it if you heard it. <laughs> a scream that could almost pass for a woman's, but it can't. I urinate. I jerk to the side. I fall to the floor. My hands are trembling, but I, I, uh, I feel around. I find it. I raise the pistol, and as I raise it towards the door, the footsteps walk away. down the hall through the kitchen out the back door I stay on the floor wet <laughs> pistol in my hand pointed at the door until the sun comes up it's difficult for me to release it but I get myself to put it down and I take a shower I, I clean off I know some things I know I'm not hallucinating this is Something that's happening, I don't know what the thing is, but I know what it wants. I know what it doesn't like. Uh, it wants to come in, it doesn't want to be laughed at. And that's interesting, because that means it has pride. This thing it has hooves, it has pride, it has a code. It won't, it won't come in unless I open the door. I have two choices at this point. I can leave my grandma's house and never come back. No one will ever understand why. And my family will be upset with me, and they won't. They'll worry about me. Think I'm crazy if I tell them the reason. I could be the crazy cousin, <laughs> a son and nephew who abandoned grandma's house because there was a monster in it. I could be that guy. <laughs> and that, that can be my relationship with my family for the rest of my life. Or, or I could confront this thing. <laughs> I chose the former. I never, ever go back to that house. I don't even stay in the city. I say, fuck it. I'm alone. My heart's broken. My grandma's dead. I'm terrified of this house. So I pack everything up my own, which is, which is not much because I, 
I already packed, and I get everything in my car and I drive. I drive all the way to Eugene, Oregon. Uh, I like trees. I like forests. I, I want to get the fuck away from the Midwest. I rest. I rent a little back house in this rural area. I get an hourly job. I start, I start building a life. My family's very unhappy with me. <laughs> I don't tell them why I moved. I just tell them, I tell them that I had to, and that's just it. And, um, um, about three months later, around 1.30 in the morning, <laughs> give or take a couple minutes, knock, knock, knock. It's my bedroom door. The knocking wakes me. I didn't even hear it enter the house. I sit up. I still have the pistol, but it's in a drawer by the bedroom door, and I'm scared that if I rise and I walk towards the door, that could be... That could be... That could, that could be interpreted wrong. So I ask. Why do you knock? One word passes through the thin wooden door in a kind of... Kind of hissing whisper. I get out of bed, I walk to the door, I put my hand on the knob, and I twist my wrist, and the latch, the hook, slides back towards the hinge. The door's loose, I tense, afraid it will push it, but it doesn't, it waits. I decide, I don't, I don't want to know what it looks like. I close my eyes, I step backwards, pulling the door all the way open. Clearing a path for it to enter, and it does. It walks past me to the bed. I hear the bed groan from the weight, and I listen to it. I breathe. And its breathing slows as it begins to fall asleep, and I just... I stand there. And I listen. After about 20... 30 minutes have passed, I open my eyes, I step softly towards the drawer with the pistol as I reach out to open it, the thing in my bed says, Rest. It says this in a way that is unmistakably an invitation to join it. I don't know what it's going to do, uh, but I know it doesn't want to kill me. It wants to, to feel me near it, and believe it or not, this is something I understand. <laughs> you want someone in bed next to it, and uh, that's a feeling I know pretty well. Uh, it doesn't deserve to die for that feeling. So I climb back in bed. This goes on for a month, every night. 1.35, give or take five minutes, it climbs in bed, it leaves before the sun rises. Some nights, it holds my hand. <laughs> I, I recoil initially, but get used to it. Two weeks in, uh, it, it licks my neck. Week after that, I let it lick my face. The next day, it strokes my stomach with its paw. I, I let it feel other parts of me. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I'm here, you're here, no one else is touching me, no one, no one. I haven't, I haven't been touched in months. I'm too fucked up to hit on anyone. I'm worthless on the apps. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, I let it touch me, then do a little more and a little more and a little more, and then, then I let it do something that no one's ever done to me, and, uh, uh, let isn't the right word anymore because fuck it. I actually kind of like it. I, I love it. Okay. I fucking love it. I still, I still don't even know what this thing I sleep next to every night looks like. I know it's, it's shape. It's heat. It's touch. It's, it's tongue. Okay. I know it. I know it has a tongue. <laughs> it has something else that feels really good. <clears throat> um, and then, uh, and then, then one night, it 
stops coming. <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> and and, and it, it's disappeared and it's never coming back. At least it hasn't yet. And, and I feel like I, I've broken. <laughs> I feel like I've been broken up with all over again. Like a spell is breaking. I feel sick. It put something in me. Something that's growing. I went to an abortion clinic. I was so stupid. I don't I don't have a uterus. They laughed at me. They laughed me out of the building. At least one nurse pitied me enough to give me the address of a surgeon. But the surgeon didn't pity me. He accused me of being high. He referred me to a psychologist. He, he wouldn't even do an x-ray. Not like I need one to know that it's getting bigger. And when it's big enough, it's going to leave. I don't know how, <laughs> how it's going to get out of me. And unlike its father, I don't think it's going to ask permission. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. And I just wanted to take a quick second to say thank you for listening to tonight's video and quite potentially tomorrow night's or last night's video, depending on how many times I've reused this recording. I especially want to give a big thanks to Eric Mary, John, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Frederick LaRue, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Nicholas Saeed Alyasin, Tyler Ramberg, Asia, Gabrielle DeBaca, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Melissa Siegwert, Szempinski, Daniel Rao, The Ginger Bros, Andrea Solvik, and Andrew Steinberg. You guys and everybody who is supporting on Patreon are the real MVPs. And if anyone would like to join them, you can always check me out at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. Or if you'd just like to support the show without, you know, Patreon, then honestly, every view or minute or however you watch or listen to this creepypasta story time on the YouTube live stream or here on YouTube, the podcast on Amazon, Google Play, and on Spotify. And if you'd like to support my wife, then there's nothing better than listening to scary stories with some Dungeons and Dragons themed herbal teas. Etsy.com slash Ivory Monocle Tea. All right, kids. Thanks so much for listening and sweet dreams. <laughs>